All right, guys, today is Tuesday, September 20th, 2022. Today marks 18 days I have left. So I would have my car out, but they're mowing next door and they're running the leaf blowers and stuff right now. So I am getting ready to get my day started. Man, this car is dirty. So I mowed my yard yesterday and left the garage door up. So a lot of that stuff came in here and got on the car. I blew it off with a leaf blower, but it got the big stuff, but it didn't get the little stuff. So my plan for today is, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to install some of this stuff that I polished, this stainless trim. That way it'll get it out of the floor. I already had a buddy of mine text me and he said, you need to get that stuff out of the floor. And I don't really know what he expects me to do with it. I can't make it levitate. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some of it on the car. That way it is out of the way because the next thing that needs to come out here really is my front fenders and I'm going to need plenty of space which this is probably going to be the area here. Uh, I might go ahead and move my table back over here because I'm pretty much done polishing stainless other than my flippers. I have to rebuild those and and uh, so I will need it but I don't have any more big pieces like that, so I should be able to do it over here in the corner. All right, guys, so I'm starting to try to install the long pieces of stainless trim for a two-door hardtop that goes along the bottom of the headliner toward the back window on the sides. There are holes in there from the factory, and they actually had the trim where it was a little bit further back, so there was a little bit of a gap at the front of the A-pillar. I'll show you here in a minute. So I'm basically setting it where I want it and re-drilling holes to make it a little bit more uh, better looking, I guess. So what I'm using here is interior uh, screws, Phillips trim screws, and these are correct for a Tri-5 Chevy. These are a number eight Phillips screw, which if you have to drill a hole, you want to use an eighth inch drill bit. But what's special about them is they have a number six head. So it's a number eight threaded part but the head is real small and that way it fits down inside your your trim pockets of your countersink uh, and and looks like it's supposed to uh, these are stainless steel so i just run them on the buffer here with green rouge which i've been polishing stainless trim for a few days so uh, i don't even put rouge on there now i just hit it with the the buffing wheel but right now i'm trying to find different links now if you want to buy these these are not a sponsor get you a couple packages of them at least but uh, anyway that is the number 8-0533 and it just this is what it looks like when you pull it out of there it comes in this kind of a an assortment so anyway i would say you definitely need at least two but you actually may need you know three or four but i don't know for sure yet because i haven't made it that far i haven't counted all the screw holes or nothing so I've already opened one package, threw it away, and dumped it out here, and then I'm getting ready to cut this package open, dump it in with it, and then i got to find the length ones that I need. But I'll show you what I'm working on. So I'm drilling new holes, and uh, just to make it fit better, I'm fitting this piece right here. And it goes up here, and it meets the A-pillar, and I can already see that this doesn't contour that A-pillar very well. And this thing has a slip part that slips onto the flange on the A-pillar, so that is where it's gonna be. Now from the factory, that was fine. But what I'm gonna try to do is maybe try to tweak this a little bit, bend the top out to try to meet that. I'm just gonna try it. I don't know if it'll work or not yet. But. So I've got me a few layers of tape here and I pull it off and reuse it on each one. And when I drill the holes that way, in case something slips, I don't bang into my freshly polished trim here. But I basically had to partially install this piece, which I don't have the screws tied on it, but I had to basically get it up here to see whereabouts this thing sets. Because when you go to put it in your car, it doesn't look right because it actually has a flange that hangs down from outside the car. But once the flipper goes in here, it meets this and it, and it looks okay. So you kind of have a, a step on this, which if this wasn't on here, this would be about that much wider 
behind that stainless trim. And it has a flange in it right here, or a bead. And that's basically about where they, they located it. So I taped my end up down here and I taped my end up down here. And that way, when I'm sliding this thing in and out of the stainless piece, trying to figure out where I want it to drill holes, it doesn't scratch up this piece and I don't have to go back and touch it up, you know, sand it and repolish the end. So anyway, this is uh, not fun. I'm not really enjoying it because I'm drilling into freshly, you know, drilling through a polished stainless trim piece that I have lots of time in, but also a brand new headliner. So uh, this is pretty much what it looks like on a, on a hard top or sport coupe. They're technically called a sport coupe, but they've got coined as hard tops through the years. And that's what I was taught to call them or what I picked up is what everybody called them. This is one of the features of a Tri-5 Chevy two-door hard top that I absolutely love. This is to me, this is just classy, having all this this polished trim around here and going up over the headliner and stuff. It just looks gorgeous. So they don't have this on a on a sedan. But anyway, I'm gonna get back to it. And uh, what I'm using is a brand new eighth inch drill bit, and this one's a little bit long. It was actually longer than that, and I cut it down. But when I'm drilling my new holes, because they had it back, they had it spaced back a little bit further. Uh, so I brought it up to it to meet it, uh, but I'm actually, since that trim kind of sets at a little bit of an angle, I'm drilling it at the same angle. So anyway, my wife's here for lunch. I'm going to go ahead and eat lunch, guys. All right, guys, what I'm working on now is I'm pre-fitting these corner pieces in, which when I did the car in mock-up, uh, I mocked up these new corner pieces. These are reproductions. And anyway, on, I think it was this one, might have been the other side. I actually had to drill the hole a little bit further up because the original hole had it a little bit lower from the roof line. So I re-drilled a new one and welded up the old one. So anyway, what I did was I slipped it on here and I put some blue painters tape along here and I marked where the end of this trim is. So when I pull this back off and I go to get the pieces of stainless trim that go on here, they snap in, I will know that they need to be at least past you know, more to the corner past that line. I don't want to snap the, like the windshield, uh, the top piece is one piece all the way across. I don't want to snap it onto here. You know, you get what I'm saying? I know I need to go past that line and past this line when I put this piece on, so. You know, your back glasses in these Tri-5 Chevys, you put the rubber on the seal, you put the back window in, and then make sure you have your clips on your body before you put your back glass with the rubber seal on it in the car, and then, your trim snaps into it. And make sure these clips are tight against the body right here. Uh, if they're hanging way down here, they're not gonna hold that trim. So make sure they're hard into the body. And I always put an extra one in down here. Uh, you have to kind of manipulate this clip here because you'll see a lot of these cars at a car show and this piece of trim has popped out from the car. And they really need that extra trim clip there, but you have to widen it up to fit on the flange. So anyway, now if you're going to do the glass yourself, it is not hard to do at all. Uh, the windshield, however, this piece of stainless here, this is one piece that goes to the middle and then the other piece, and then there's a little divider piece. These have to be in that rubber before you put your windshield in. So before you put your windshield on, put your windshield seal on. It has a little flap that lifts up, and that's what that trim goes under. But that piece has to be in that rubber before you put your windshield on. So I pulled these reproduction corner pieces for the back window out of the package, and they have a square nut on them. And if you've ever tried to use these back there, when you're laying up in the back of the car, these suck. These are really really kind of silly so I went through and I dug through a just a container of miscellaneous small nuts and I found a pair that look like they're stainless uh, that actually is the same thread don't know what thread size it is but uh, they could be metric because they are reproduction but I'm not using those square things it's kind of silly hopefully there's room to put that nut on there um, I really can't understand the square thing. I don't have any square sockets.
All right, guys, so since I'm by myself, I have to take a lot of precautions, so I use a lot of blue painter's tape. But, you know, tape is cheaper than paint. So I put the tape across the back of the paint here, and I let it overhang that edge just a little bit. You can see where the trim came down. Now, something that I did, I had sanded and buffed the roof a couple years ago, and when you buff something, you usually get some residue on the edge so on this flange that comes under you know i had some uh, built up compound and when compounds on something that long you've really got to use compound to get it off so i actually used uh, mcguire's product uh, it's a swirl mark remover on a fresh little piece of microfiber and i cleaned up that channel and got it all back shiny again because i had i've just put that trim on there with that dull under there you'd have seen a dull edge in between it so anyway I put three rows of tape really wide where it's kind of loose on the trim but uh, anyway it comes over and that way in case it pops up when I come around to the other side it won't fall down and scratch up the paint on the car so uh, the tape is like a it's just safety is all it is but so anyway I'd marked where the corners went earlier and I've got it just below this line but it's actually a little higher on this side, but it is like right at it, uh, just barely over, like an eighth inch over, which will cover. The uh, trim piece will go over that. So an eighth inch is good, but I'm gonna try to uh, move my hands and try to, I'll have to do it from that side, but I'm gonna try to move it over. Um, the important thing on this trim is don't whack it with your palm of your hand and don't use a mallet. Uh, this stuff is thin and it will dent and I had to fix three dents in this from what it looked like somebody doing this You can really just get you if you can see where the clip is or as you're right before you snap it on You can look under there and you can see where the clips are and you just stick your thumb on there and push down and it just snaps right on there, so Anyway, uh, there's you know, there's not a clip over on this side of the corner And that's because these corner pieces when they go on it holds this this end down and it holds the end of the lower corner piece as well so when you tighten it up that's what holds this in and and pulls this up even so anyway that is one of the ones this is actually the easiest of, of all of them because uh, on these hard tops specifically this corner piece has a kick in it right here it like almost looks straight and then has a a quick bend in it so trying to get that lined up on here and get it snapped in and get it exactly where it needs to be to have the correct contour to lay in this channel is pretty tricky so i'm again going to be putting some two inch tape across here and probably doing a couple layers actually but because i don't want it slipping out you know what i mean but i'm going to finish trying to roll this over just a little bit if it doesn't it's not a big deal it looks like it fits the car pretty good but this trim looks amazing that uh that buff work i did for three days i mean it it just paid off, man. I'm in love with it. Stuff looks great. <clears throat> I got um, I got the felt strip on this belt molding and got it reinstalled on the car because I had the belt molding on here before, but I had to pull it back off to put the felt strip on. And when I put my felt strips on, I, I drop them down just a little bit off the top, just barely off the top. And then as I'm uh, riveting it on there, uh, I tweak it as I go so it's exactly the same on both sides. I don't like it when that bead gets you know low or high where it's wavy on that belt. I like it to be nice and even. And also if you're doing belt moldings and you're putting new felt strips on, you need to be aware of the notch in this corner piece right here it has a little notch cut out right here. And you'll have to trim this back and I actually needed to trim that back just a little bit more. but. Anyway, so when you're doing that, pay attention to that because the felt strips are usually longer and you'll have to end up bending it down at the back because that trim piece has an angled cut on the back of it. So anyway, I'll show you the, the piece up here. I got it installed. It's got my handprints all over it, but uh, I, I'm pretty impressed with it. The only problem is I can't get it to contour this edge right here. So what I think I'm going to do is take it back loose and try to bend this a little bit more. I did twist this quite a bit because it was a lot worse. But I'm going to try to tweak that just a little bit more to get it to where it contours that better. But 
I am happy with it, man. It's looking good. All right, guys, it's about 6 p.m. So I pulled the car in here and I've got it kind of in here at an angle so I can get both doors open. I'm gonna continue working pretty late tonight. So I got my bench put back over there where it was. That was kind of good I got to pull that out because I got to clean all the cobwebs and the crap off the wall and clean the floor and sweep it and everything. Man, it was nasty. I got the stainless around the back window. It's all on. Uh, didn't scratch or chip any paint, which is a plus. That's really tough to do, uh, especially when you're by yourself trying to do stainless trim. But I used a lot of blue tape, and I'm glad I did because there was at one point that the trim slipped while I was trying to fit it up on the car, and had I not had blue tape on it, it would probably scratch the paint. So it fits really nice. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, and now, you know, the car's looking a little bit more complete from the back because now the trim's on it. One good thing about it is when I'm wiping the car down with a wet microfiber rag, my rag won't catch those clips anymore. So I'm real happy about that. Um, well, it wasn't too bad, really. It wasn't really bad at all. So anyway what i'm getting ready to do now is work on this stainless piece for the other side of the headliner up there uh, more than likely gonna have to redrill the holes again like i had to do on this side because whoever put them in from the factory they just they didn't fit them up there you know to where they're perfect now that's just a mass-produced product that's what happens but i wanted it to fit a little bit better so yeah i've got it on there and i wiped it down so now it's I mean, that's the, the beauty of having a 55 Tudor hardtop. All the hardtops, you know, 6 and 7 as well, has that stainless trim down it. But 55 is the only one that has these three bows in it. These are stainless. Original, they were chrome. And it's uh, 55 is the only one that has the corner lights, which I call opera lights. But that is one of my favorite features about a 55 specifically Tudor hardtop. So I wiped all this down in here with the wet microfiber because this was all covered in dust back here. But I can't believe how dusty this stuff gets. But, you know, I don't have any windows in the car, so everything that's blowing around in the air it winds up in here. But that's what I'm getting ready to do now is fit up this part. I might go ahead and do this part next, actually, because I can't really put the corner rear pieces on until this back window piece is in. And... I kind of need to figure out, hopefully the holes line up so I don't have to re-drill new ones. I don't really want to try drilling up in an angle that way. I mean, I will if I have to. I just, I hope I can get them to fit good. What I really don't like is when screws are going in at an angle instead of being straight. You know, like the screw's tight, but it's it's cocked in the part, and I, it just drives me crazy. So if that happens, I will dr real drill a hole, but hopefully I won't have to. But the goal for tonight, before I go to bed, which I wanted to do it last night, but there's, there was really no way, especially as much time as it took to do the back window stainless. Um, I want to get this piece of trim in on the inside, put the piece of trim along the back of the headliner on the inside, and I want to put all the lower windshield stainless on and the wiper arms and stuff. So I've got, I've got some work to do, but all the stainless is done. It's over here, so... All I need to do now is wipe it down with some Mother's Magnet Aluminum Polish to get the remnants of the rouge off and uh, start putting stuff on. If you've never done lower windshield trim, it is kind of tricky. Uh, it is a real easy way to scratch paint. And I am not sure I've ever been shown the correct way of doing it, but I have a way that I do it. So <laughs> uh, it's a little bit different from probably everybody else what they do, but it seems to work out good. Uh, well, I say that I'll wait till I get this one done and then we'll see but anyway guys the work continues, but uh, I Am actually starting to get hungry. My wife went to a dinner uh, with her co-workers, so I'm kind of thinking I better go in and get me something to eat because uh, once I get hungry I start getting hangry. You know what I mean? 